Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Mess Graphics here. Today guys, I'm going to be showing you how to design a cloth flyer using Photoshop CC23. So without further ado guys, let's get started and let's start designing. So guys, we have our Photoshop open right here and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to create new. So for this project guys, I'm going to be using a 2000 by 2000 pixel size. A 200 resolution and an RGB color mode. So as you can see, we have our workspace right here. And um, what I want to do is I want to be placing the image that I'll be using as my background and do what remember guys that all the images all the fonts and all the documents that I'll be using for this project can be found in the description I'm going to be putting a link to my Dropbox so I can actually access all the files that I'll be using for this project so let me just expand this and flip it and then what i'm going to be doing next is i'm going to be adding the write-up for this flyer then i'm going to be adjusting the font for this um test so for the font i'm going to be using um blacklisted And then I'm going to be adjusting the leading and the tracking of my test. Okay. So let me just increase this a little bit. And adjust it accordingly. okay so i'm going to be adding the people that are going to be hosting this program so that's the name of the bar that will be hosting this program so for this i'll be changing the font to akira expanded and i'm going to adjust the size Okay, so let me just reduce this using my transform controls. Okay, and then I'm just going to duplicate this and then add presence quickly. So for this particular test, I'm going to be using the loose tracking. Okay. And then I'm going to reduce it using my transform controls. I actually think that's perfect. And um, I'm just going to do some further adjustments to the write up. Okay, so once we are done with that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding the image of the model that I'll be using to beautify this piece. So this is um, actually an image from an image pack that I have on my laptop and I'm going to be adding it right on this design. To the right, um, bottom right, and I'm going to be adjusting it. So that it doesn't cover the test, it just covers the test a little bit. Just covers the test partially. So I don't want it to cover the entire test. I just want it to cover some parts of the test whereby the image is on top of the test, but you can actually read what is on the test. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. And right after that, I'm going to be adding the date and the address of this um, event. 
so i'm going to be doing that quickly so i'm trying my best to use different fonts for different aspects of this design and for the date and time i'm going to be using bebas okay so let me just adjust this and type out the rest of the um time and um the date So at this point, I'm going to be adding um, a rectangle to actually differentiate between the date for this event and the time. So once I'm done with adding the date and the time i'm going to be enclosing this in a rectangular shape okay let me just find the perfect spot and um, i'm not going to be having any fuel on the shape i'm just going to be having an outline and i'll be using white for the color of my outline so let me just um, adjust the thickness okay and then um i'm going to make a selection of the saturday test and then i'm going to modify expand okay i think uh, that's actually too much so let me just try that again so i'm using a smaller value this time And what I want to do is I want to create a max on this shape using the selection I've made. So let me just um, head over to the max icon here and then I'll hit Ctrl I on my keyboard to inverse the selection. And we have this right here. So I'm going to actually convert everything to a smart object. But first let me group it and then convert the shape to a smart object. So remember guys to keep your design organized and always um, group um, similar elements together. It helps keep your design clean and it helps you with the workflow of your designs. I'm going to be um, increasing this uh, date. Okay. So let me just uh, place it at this point. okay so um everything is looking nice already so let me just uh, zoom out to um see how far we've come on the design okay so i'm actually going to be adding the rest of the test and this will actually be uh, consisting of the name of the DJ, the name of the hype man, and the name of the person that will be handling the conga. So first of all, I just want to write the name of the DJ that is actually hosting this event. And actually, the write-up is Old School Nights with DJ Stainless. But for this suite, I'm going to be using one of my best fonts, uh, Beta Signature. And... Once I'm done with adjusting the tracking, I'm going to be placing it right under the main thing, which is old school night. Okay, guys. So before we can actually get on with that, I'm actually going to be adding some gradient effect on the team before we continue because I'm actually going to be adding some effects that will make um, this team pop uh, the more. But first of all, let me start by adding... Um, a gradient overlay on this test so let me just um, do that quickly so for that I'm going to head over to window um, and then styles and what I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to add a 
three designs tied to this uh, test. I've already created the gradient on Photoshop and I saved it as a style. So I'm going to try my best to export this style and add it to um, the project file so you guys can download it and use it on your own Photoshop. But um, what I want to do is actually I want to start changing the colors of the right up. That's the reason why I actually changed the color of the team first so that I'll be able to understand the correspondence between the colors that I'll be using for the rest of the right tops. Okay. So once I'm done with that, I'm actually going to head back into um, adding the name of the DJ and then continue with the rest of the right top. So for this, I'm going to be using Akira Expanded and um, you guys are going to notice the way I'm going to be playing around with uh, different colors and uh, using colors to separate different aspects of the test. And it's actually going to help you understand uh, more on contrast and how to actually differentiate different levels of test on your design. So let me just quickly do that so you guys can see that uh, and understand what I mean. Okay, so before I finish with um, the um, names of the instrumentalists that will be gracing this event, I'll actually be adding a demarcation on the, the name of the DJ. And it's actually easy to do. It's just for you to take your test tool and just repeatedly type I. And um, once you're done with that, you can just um, reduce it um, to any size you want. So um, I actually learned this um, by seeing other designers in the field doing this, but I actually add a spice to my own by increasing the tracking to actually increase the space in between it. And then I just uh, adjust it. So it's actually cool for um, flyers and uh, cloth flyers, especially because it actually gives it an extra beauty. I don't know why I just know it is in most of all the flyers I saw on club designs when I was actually starting out as a graphic designer, but I actually noticed that it looks cool. So I also implemented it in my own design. So um, I'm just going to group um, similar elements together uh, as usual. But first of all, I want to actually make sure I'm done with adding the write-ups for the down part of this design. So once I'm done with that, I'm just going to be adjusting um, this area of the design and uh, I'm actually going to select all of them and um, adjust it using my transform controls. So I just want to take it to the top a little bit so that I can have extra space for the address. I actually forgot about the address when I was writing the brief. For this design but funny enough i got to remember it later on in the design and i had to add it because you can't just have a flyer without telling the people where the program is happening so let me just add that and then we'll get on with other parts of this design Okay, so I'm actually going to be adjusting the address and um, reducing the size so that it um, is in the same proportion with the rest of the write-ups. 
ओके सो आई एम एक्चुअली गोइंग टू डू दिस टिल आई एम सेटिस्फाइड विथ द वे इट लुक्स सो लेट मी जस्ट ऐड अ लिटिल डिबकेशन ऑन टॉप ऑफ दिस एड्रेस ओके सो आई एम दिस काइंड ऑफ डिजायर दैट इज वेरी वेरी कीन अबाउट व्हाइट स्पेस and uh, i always make sure my designs actually have a lot of space around the edges because i don't want everything to look clogged together so that's why i've tried my best to work on the lower part of this design so that it doesn't look as if it's on the edge that much so let me just um, select everything and read it a little bit so guys one of the major um, advantages of grouping your work is that it helps you arrange your design and it helps you keep track of um, similar elements in your design um, for example you can see that i actually grouped um, similar elements together like all the write-ups that you have that is on the lower part of my design the write-up at the top and then the main theme and the date and the time so everything that i grouped on this design is actually to help me identify individual groups or individual uh, layers that i want to be making adjustments to so it's actually very very important to make sure you do that on your design and then what i'm trying to do now is i'm trying to make sure that the space at the top and the lower side is equal and once i'm done with that i'm going to be adjusting the image of the lady a little bit okay and then um let me just group the top elements in this design So since I'm actually done with my write up, I'm going to be focusing on the effect on the team. And to do that, I'm going to convert this um, test layer to a smart object. And then um, once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit Control T on my keyboard. And what I want to do is I want to get to the WAP icon right on top of my um, workspace right here. And then. Um, for my warp effect, I'm going to be going with wave and I'm just going to adjust this um, accordingly to my own personal preference. So there is no rule or law behind it. You can actually do what works best for you, but I don't just want it to be that much. I just want it to be balanced and uh, to also look nice. Okay, so let me just adjust this to a whole number. Okay, and um, I'm actually going to be adding uh, some kind of glow effect to this test. So let me just duplicate it. And then I'm going to um, actually uh, name this layer. And then what I want to do is I want to head over to um, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And um, I want to just blur this layer a little bit. And then uh, once I'm done with that, okay. So I'm going to change the blend mode for this layer to screen. And what I've been able to achieve is uh, to create a glow around my team. And then I'm going to group these two layers together. And this will be um, the group for my team. So the design is uh, coming together actually, even though I haven't done anything on the background for now.
but uh, I must say that I'm impressed with the way this design is looking. And I'm um, just uh, selecting everything in this design at this point right now and converting it to a smart object. So next, I want to head into my smart object contents. And to do that, I have to double click on the smart object thumbnail. And then what I want to do is I want to head over to um, image, um, canvas size. And um, I want to increase this to 8000 by 8000 pixels. Okay, so let me actually fit this to um, my screen. So I'm actually going to save this by hitting Ctrl S on my keyboard. So once it's done saving, I'm going to head back to my previous design window. And what I want to do is I want to hit Ctrl T on my keyboard once again. Head back into the WAP icon. And for this, I'll be using Wave once again. But this time around, I'm going to be setting my bend to something smaller. So I think I'm going to be using um, 10 for this. So let me just zoom in to actually see the areas that I need to be adjusting in this design. So let me just drag it up. So I really want the woman to be at the top of the layer. I don't want um, the right top to rest on her hair. I want her to be at the top of the layer and her hair should cover a bit of the test. So um, that's the adjustment that I'll be doing at this point uh, before I get to the main design, which is actually working on making the background very beautiful. But before that, let me actually name this um, layer. Now, be doing right after that is actually very, very important. I want to blend the image of the lady with the image of the background, and I'll be showing you the steps on how to do that. So, first of all, I'm going to head over to the background, duplicate it, and I put the duplicate on top of the image at the top of the layer. I want to change the blending options to overlay. And then I'm actually going to adjust this and make sure it's clipped on the image of the lady. Okay. And then I'm actually going to reduce the effect a little bit. And then I'm going to match both of them together. So what I actually did was just to blend the image of the lady to my background and then i'm going to convert it to a smart object and then i'm actually going to be working on the background because i've actually done lots of things and um, i think the background should be next and um, there's not much i'm adding again after adding the background so let me just add this image of uh, an old stereo radio to just um, give a brief explanation of the theme of this event so let me just add it appropriately and then take it to uh, the top of my background layer and then i'll be using um soft light for the blend mode so guys, what I want to do is I want to rasterize this layer to enable me to use my eraser to clear some parts of this image. Okay. So let me just do that. Okay. And then what I want to do next is I want to um, adjust this lady a little bit. I'm still having issues on the way her image is placed. So I'm trying my best to rectify that before I can 
go ahead in the design and then i'm going to be adding um a png version of the same radio on my background so let me just add that quickly okay so i'm just going to be adjusting this and um, placing it right here and then what i want to do is i want to head over to filter uh, blur uh, Gaussian blur okay increase it a little bit okay and then I'm just going to duplicate this image and place it as strategic areas in this flyer to add more beauty to it Okay. So right now I'm going to be adding uh, some enhancements to the image of this lady. So I'm going to head over to filter, camera raw filter. So we have our camera raw filter open right here. And um, what I want to adjust is um, actually the clarity and um, the details on this image. So guys, in as much as the values I'm going to be using for this adjustment is just my own personal preference, you can either go by it or actually go for your own touch or for your own feel on the image on this design. But the reason why I'm doing this is actually to add more details on the image of the lady and also add some sort of shadows to the image so once i've done that i'll just head over to ok so as you can see the image is appearing nicer than it was before and you can see more extended shadows and even some noticeable um difference when i off and on this effect on this image so the image is actually looking better and um, I'm going to zoom in to just um, verify the information on the flyer and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding an overlay to this image that will just uh, fill some areas of this flyer with extra bouquet lights for beauty so for my blend mode i'll be using screen and then i'm going to hit ctrl t and then um, flip this horizontally okay so as you can see there is um, some level of uh, beauty that this overlay effect added so i'm just going to duplicate it and then i'm going to zoom around to see um how just appreciate how beautiful this design is looking at this point um the shadows on the lady is on point the blending of the image to the background is on point and everything is actually looking very very nice so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to um, select these two layers and group them together so this is uh, the bokeh effect that will actually used to lighten up the design 
and then I'm going to group the background together. And it's been a long ride, guys, and I can really say that this design is looking nice, but I'm going to be adding some effects again on the background. But before I'm going to do that, I'm going to select everything. So I'm going to select everything and group them together. And then what I want to do is I want to uh, name this. Uh, and after naming it, I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. And I'll be converting this um, layer to a smart object just after I name it. And what I want to do is I want to add an effect to this particular um, layer. Okay, so first of all, let me crop the extra parts on this um, image. So I just want to remove the extra parts of this design. And I want this effect to be only on this layer that I duplicated. So let me just convert it to a smart object. And then I'll head over to filter, camera raw filter. So I'm actually going to do something similar to what I did on the image of the lady. I'm going to increase the clarity. Okay. And um, the next thing I'm going to be working on is the details. That's the sharpening. And after that, I also work on the effects. Um, that's the vignetting. So I'll just mix the edges of the design a little bit darker. And I'll hit OK too. So as we can see, the design is looking very beautiful. And um, very, very nice. I think um, the extra effects added an extra beauty to the design. And I must confess, this design is looking very, very awesome. And I'm very, very excited to see what you guys will actually create out of this because I was actually quite excited when I made this design. And um, I'm also excited to see what you guys can be able to come up with. So you can just reach me through my social media accounts on my description or maybe on my profile where you can actually reach out to me with what you did. You can actually post it on Instagram and tag mess graphics on your Instagram and all that. So I'm really, really excited to see what you guys will be able to come up with this design. And I really want to thank you guys for staying to the end of this video because I actually came back from a long day and I had to shoot this video into the night. I think this is actually uh, 2 a.m. That's why I can notice that my voice is actually kind of uh, low because I don't want to disturb my neighbors and then um, also, um, I had a stressful day, so that's why my voice is a little bit like this. But I want to thank you guys for sticking with me. I want to thank you guys for continuously watching my video and for the support that you guys always give. I've not been online for a while now, and many of you reached out to me on my Instagram and on my WhatsApp, so I appreciate all of you. I would rather say that I'm done. Mess Graphics out. If you are new to my channel, do well to subscribe and if you're an old subscriber, thank you and keep sticking with us. Goodbye, guys. See you in my next video.